Hey, what's up, guys? Before I reveal what I'm talking about, I just want to say that I appreciate the subs and support I've been getting. I don't want to be some pandering autist, but I genuinely appreciate it because my last video had my highest view rate in a single day, but it was also my most controversial video because some people can handle the word faggot. Snake tongued faggot, and I'm out. Waste of nice editing. Well, at least he said I have nice editing. Okay, listen here, pussy. This channel is edgy, okay? Deal with it. That's part of my lingo, and so is the n-word. <coughs> Today, I'm going to be talking about games that traumatized me as a kid. Or at least scared me. Now we've all played those classic indie scary games as kids. Maybe even watch some of our favorite Let's Players play them for us. Just waltz my way in here. Whoa. Ooh. Ew. But I'm not going to be talking about that pussy shit like Slender or Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm talking about a real man's game. Games meant for chads, like myself. These games don't have to be necessarily oriented around horror. It's just about whether or not I was scared, intentionally or not. So without further ado, let's get straight into this shit. I woke up in a room. The room is not locked, and I remember everything. I'm a werewolf. Tonight I will turn and people will die, unless I find a way to prevent myself from leaving this place. I must make sure that whatever happens, I don't escape. Now this game is called Don't Escape, and if you couldn't already tell by the name of it, the point of this game is to not escape. The animation style of this game, the music, the premise, all of it comes together to create this eerie game that always creeped me out as a kid. There is a set of letters in the house, written by the protagonist himself in a journal, subtly telling the player the correct route of actions to take in order to survive the night of the full moon. There are a total of six different cutscenes in the game, and only one of which is successful. Each of which involve the player finally turning into a werewolf, and your success depends on the amount of preparation and fortifications you set up to keep yourself from leaving. If everything is done correctly, the ending you get gives you a calm night, as everything you have done causes the now exhausted werewolf to flee into the woods, avoiding the villagers and monster hunting team from killing you. This game is a fucking classic. It's a Nintendo game that was released in 94, and let me just say that it's one of my favorite games of all time. However, when I first played it a long time ago, it creeped me the fuck out. Earthbound is an RPG that went on to inspire some of the most successful RPGs of recent memory. Games like Pokemon and Undertale borrowed the playstyle that was featured in Earthbound. Earthbound is part of the Mother series, being the second installment in that series. To sum it up, the game follows Ness, a 13-year-old kid traversing the world in order to stop the possibility of a future alien invasion that will send reality into non-existence. Basically, is the short of it. The story of this game is actually pretty dark for a Nintendo game. It has some of the most iconic music in the modern culture, with the music you're hearing right now being used in memes. But it also has some pretty terrifying music. This song that you're hearing right now always used to scare me as a kid. And it appeared when you were in the Caverns of Winter. It actually went on to also be used in the game Sonic.exe, and we all know that piece of shit. But the part of the game that really scared me was the character Gygus. This swirly faced cunt used to have me shit bricks back then, and the music used in the final battle against him was nightmare fuel. Now there are fan theories of Gygus, like the abortion theory where Gygus is actually a fetus and that's why you have to go back in time to kill him. But I'm not going to get into that shit here, because I don't want to make a 10 hour video. 7 on the scare factor for me. <laughs> now this game is called Power Drill Massacre. It's a game that came out in 2015 that was inspired by the old vintage graphics of the 90s. The theme of the game is centered around this 80s-esque horror movie trope, with the main character being led to an abandoned building in order to seek help for a car crash that ensued in the intro of the game. There are secret areas you could find in the game, at least I think they're secrets, where you can find rundown shacks and pentagrams. You know, very welcoming things. Once you get into the abandoned building, the doors lock behind you, and from there, you're supposed to find all of the paint-labeled keys in order to escape. The thing I love about this game is that once you enter the building, the keys and everything you need to find are all randomly generated each time, so there is no clear pathway to take. There are multiple endings to this game, a bad ending where you get caught, stripped naked and killed, and the true ending where you escape 
and get killed? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell, but based on the screams of agony at the end, I assume it's the latter. Combine that with the long hallways, no music, and a terrifying set of corridors and dead ends called the Sugar Tunnel, and you get pretty fucking spooked as a kid. To this day, I have never finished that game. Not because I'm a pussy, but because I'm busy and I have other shit to do. Okay, this game didn't come out when I was a kid, but I still wanted to include it anyway. This story is very long and convoluted, way too long for me to cover it here, so if you want the full explanation of the story in detail, I recommend Aaron Signal's video because he did a really good job. To sum it down a bit, the game Faith is a satanic themed game following a priest named John Ward. We learn in the beginning that John is going to a house where he previously performed an exorcism on a little girl named Emily Martin. According to him though, there seemed to have been some unfinished business left unattended to. The graphics seem to take inspiration from the very old school Atari graphics of back in the day, and that aspect makes it all the more terrifying. The simplicity of it, paired along with the occasional animations from hell, just creep me the fuck out. There are two chapters, and I personally think that the first one was much scarier, but that isn't to knock the game. It's all uncanny and eerie. By the end of the game, the possessed girl jumps out of the window and runs off after being defeated in a final battle. You then discover a rifle, and by that point, there are five endings you can take, and each one is weird, but in a fucky way. Ending one has you shoot the little girl and drive off doing a little monologue, only to be chased by the police. Ending two has you shoot the creepy old man behind one of the rundown shacks and drive off only to have the demon that's been chasing you throughout the entire game be in the backseat of your car. Ending 3 has you shoot the rodent surrounded by the pentagram shaped offering circle and get killed by cultists. Ending 4 has you shoot that dumb fucking deer only to get in a car crash and get fucking vored by all of the deer surrounding you. And ending 5 is the only really good ending. Having you shoot the demon that's been chasing you. It's a great game. Good scare. I give good grade. Now this game is called Zog's Nightmare. It has you playing as a neo-Nazi, or Nazi, Bruh. something like that. And the goal of this game is to kill all the Jewish officers in sight. The background music is really strange rock, not this shit you're hearing, but it's kind of uncanny given the premise of the game. It's incredibly hard to kill the enemies though, taking over two clips for each enemy. I mean, damn, these Jews are pretty resilient. By the way, YouTube, I know you're basically brain dead, so I want to clarify that that was satire. I don't want the FBI knocking on my door for hate crimes. There really isn't too much to say. I don't really know if the person who made this game is really racist or if he's just doing it for the meme. When I see this now, I just laugh, but back then I was very PC and playing it was always kind of weird and unnerving. Think Wolfenstein except the roles are reversed and instead of Americans it's Jews. Somebody please make it stop. Butt sauce. Going postal refers to becoming extremely angry, often resorting to violence in the workplace. And that is honestly the best way to describe this game. This game came out in 2003, when games like GTA were just picking up steam. Life is funny, isn't it? <laughs> Jim, Playing this shit young was both really fucking cool and unnerving at the same time. I was brainwashed as a kid to not play into games like these, but I couldn't help it. It was just so cool and kind of ahead of its time. It had grainy graphics of the early 2000s, which I always found great, and the classic addition to games, and honestly, some of the mechanics added to this game kind of made it better than QTA in a way. First off, let's start with the weapons. You get shit like pistols, to shotguns, to jerry cans, to giant fucking tasers. However, my favorite mechanic in the game is to whip out your big fat cock and piss on people. I always used to piss on people in a strip club and then block the door so they couldn't leave. I'm like Louis CK, but with piss instead of masturbating. Why did they creep me out? Well, I was a pussy at the time, and this game was really fucking offensive. There were terrorists in the game, you could rob banks and do all types of crazy shit. You did have a to-do list to follow, but I never cared. I just cared about the mayhem. This was the first game I played which had me play as the bad guy, so when I did, it just kind of made me feel dirty. It's a good game though, I highly recommend it. What? the fuck was wrong with me as a kid. This game is very fucking strange and just not right. 
It's definitely not for kids, but I played it. So this game is called Euphoria, and it seems to be some sort of BDSM hentai game, but I never finished it because I was just way too unnerved when I played this. So there are seven characters in this game slash story, and they're all Asian Jap names, so I'm not going to try and pronounce them. You play as the main lead, the initially innocent sounding guy who gets trapped in the weird chamber with a bunch of pretty bitches. When the game starts, you're immediately told by some weird saw type people that you're the key and one of the six women that you're trapped with is the key hole. I know, weird. There are multiple routes you can take depending on which girl you decide to go with, and there is torture and utterly terrifying imagery with every move you make. And the weirdest shit is that the character you control is some kind of kinkmeister, Fifty Shades of Grey creep who likes this shit. It's kind of like some shitty harem anime plot combined with Saw and had some weird love child. If you decide to play this game, um, just don't be surprised if you get a knock on the door. This game is called Demonophobia. It's a strange game that I played back in the day as a youngin, and it was a very disturbing day's worth of attempting to beat this game. This game opens up with you waking up in this hellish landscape. You play as this young, 14-ish year old girl who has to maneuver her way around these demonic beings in order to escape this purgatory limbo place. There are traps in every fucking room you enter, and it gets incredibly fucking hard the further down the rabbit hole you go. This game was created by some Korean guy who goes under the alias of 237. Kind of weird, right? Maybe it translates to the n-word in binary. I don't know. According to this Asian gibberish on the text, the backstory goes like this. The protagonist you play as is, in short, an atheist and doesn't believe in any supernatural shit. However, she one day stumbled upon a satanic book filled with spells, curses, and a bunch of other very friendly sounding things. She decided to recite one of these spells on a girl for the fuck of it, but little to her knowledge, the spell actually ended up working. You are then damned to hell, almost losing hope until some weird saint ghost thing appears and tells you that your only chance of escaping is to go to the center of the satanic labyrinth. Alright, now the animation is very crude, but it's something that adds the creep factor, at least for me. One thing that I want you guys to notice is this. Do you notice that? Silence. No music. No game audio. No surround sound. It's just nothing. And that's one of the most unnerving parts of this game, is the fact that it's so silent when you're playing it. Oh, and I also want to note that midway through the game, your character loses all of her clothing. Yep. Strange. Alright, moving on. One of the most terrifying things I have ever played. This game is a deep web game. Oh shit, I know, spooky, right? Well, regardless, the first appearance of this game was in 2015 by a channel going by the name of Obscure Horror Corner. This game was apparently downloaded off of the deep web through an onion link using the very strange Tor browser. There are actually several variations of this game, the most notable ones being the ones uploaded by the Obscure Horror Corner channel, and another version uploaded by Mudahar, some ordinary gamers. <laughs> The version that Mudahar played was much more disturbing than the other one, with that specific one having disturbing gore pornography and other fucked up audio and images. That's really fucking weird. Fuck. <coughs> <coughs> that was an image of a person who lost their fucking head. To be honest, I don't even know which one I played. Maybe an entirely different one than either of them. I downloaded this motherfucker off of my old computer from some strange website. However, if you do plan to download this, be very careful and make sure you have a solid antivirus because I'm pretty sure that my dumbass decision to download this game caused my old PC to get a virus. The version that I played was very similar to the other ones in the sense of the animation style and the strange audio sound bites. However, the gameplay for this game was very different. All of the pop-up images that I received were not gore, but I think censored versions of them. I remember that I was extremely paranoid when I was playing this game. There was no music except for the sound of your footsteps and the strange audio that would play throughout the game. I don't even remember if the version I played even had an end. I was way too freaked out to actually end up finishing it. Now, onto the lore. The audio used in this game ranges from a number station played in reverse, to incredibly slowed down songs, to screaming.
When I saw both Etika and Mudahar play this game, they both said that the audio had actually made them sick. Noises are fucked, but something just rubbed me the wrong way. Like right now, I'm getting this like pungent feeling inside me. Like I really, really want to. <coughs> I really want to throw up right now. I didn't personally feel sick when listening to it, but that's just me. When playing this game, you get led down a long stretch of corridors and dead ends. Now there are some theories surrounding this game, ranging from this being made by a mentally disturbed murderer, to the themes of this game being surrounded around child abuse, due to one of the images that popped up having the acronym for the National Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, and also due to the fact that the long-winded passageways resemble a prison. I don't even know what the fuck to make of this game. Like I said before, the version that I played was not the same as the original Sad Satan upload, and if this was a troll game or some fan-made game for the lore made to freak people the fuck out, then they did a really good job because when I played this, I certainly was.